are the ones for the tourists. Anchorage is the headquarters for many organizations, including the Alaska Association of the Deaf, the AAD. How does the AAD provide services to deaf people living in an area larger than Washington, Oregon, California, Idaho, and Montana combined? AAD President Al Burke. That's a big problem. We have to set up a network in order to get the word out, spread the word through radio and networking. In Fairbanks, there are about 12 deaf people, and in Juneau, we have about seven. Here we have about 200. But if you add to those numbers the people who are hard of hearing or older people who lose their hearing or become deaf, then I would say the numbers go up to three to 4,000. The biggest problem is reaching the more isolated villages. Many of the Indians, in an effort to maintain their own cultural values, do not send their deaf children to school here. They prefer to stay at home. So we have a program called SESA, flying out to these villages to train teachers there how to work with deaf children. It's only once a month, that's all, not nearly enough. One of the problems is that we white people have really done a lot of damage to their culture. So we have to step back and somehow find a better way to educate the deaf children. I met other deaf members and hearing friends of the AAD at a picnic welcoming Deaf Mosaic to Alaska. As an AAD board member, my primary responsibility is to oversee the AAD second annual family learning vacation camp and the AAD interpreter training camp. You know, as I explained before, families live quite far away from the school and are not aware of such issues as deaf culture, deaf studies, or American Sign Language. They don't know about deaf education. Their responsibility doesn't end when they send their children here. We encourage parents to come here, learn about deafness, go back home, and teach their other children to enhance their development. The AAD members are advocates, lobbyists, and fundraisers. Last year, they raised funds to start captioning the news, and this year will receive $36,000 to continue this vital service. We recently received a $35,000 grant from the municipality to meet medical interpreting needs. Those people who get SSI or who don't have enough money can request an interpreter and use those funds. In the past, deaf people had to pay for interpreting services out of their own pockets, and it is very expensive to pay for the doctor and then pay for the interpreter on top of that. 